What's going on guys, welcome to a new video. So in this one, I want to have an honest discussion. Well, it's not really a discussion because it's just me talking here, but I want to talk honestly then about how to make money drop shipping. I've been speaking to a lot of beginners, a lot of people who want to get into it. Um, and it's apparent that a lot of people avoid starting a drop shipping business because they have so many unanswered questions and so many unsureties about the actual business. Um, it puts them off starting. So especially with it being Q4 now, um, we're a week into Q4 now, is such a great time to get started in this business. My goal and objective then of this video is to try and answer some of those really big questions um, so that you feel comfortable enough um, to take that gamble, to take that risk of actually starting your dropshipping business because you truly do never know where it's going to lead for you and kind of you, you'll never know whether it will work for you unless you actually do it and actually start. Also with anything new when you're just starting out there's going to be so much to learn and so much to take in it because it can become quite overwhelming about what you need to do and how everything works so Ultimately, I'm going to break down the fundamentals of drop shipping, all the kind of key components, so you know where to kind of spend most of your time and attention and your focus um, on these things. And I'm also going to explain in this video how to do them well as well, how to do them correctly. So fingers crossed, by the end of this video, you'll feel really confident about starting your business. You'll know how to start your business and you'll have a direction to go in. Before we actually start the video though, um, a couple of very quick things. So number one is the best thing you can always do is start um, even after this video or it doesn't matter how many videos you watch um, on the internet, on YouTube, you will never have the answers to every single question. So the best thing you can always do is start. And number two, YouTube videos are brilliant. However, it's impossible to create a YouTube video which is gonna answer everybody's questions. Um, it's natural that there's gonna be things that are left unanswered. So something I'm thinking of doing is potentially weekly or maybe even monthly Q and A's where we go on YouTube, we go live for an hour, people can hop on and just put questions to me live and I can answer them there and then. If that's the sort of thing that you wanna see, make sure you let me know in the comments section down below. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's jump into the video, which is gonna be how to make money with dropshipping, where to spend your time and focus, what are the sort of things that you need to make sure that you're doing well. So if you look at any successful dropshipping business or any successful e-commerce business, there's always three things that they do really, really well, or at least to a decent standard. I like to call them the three pillars. And these three things you have to do, all three of them to a decent standard as well, because if you only do two of them, the business fails. If you only do one of them, the business fails. It has to be all three. So these three things are the website, so i.e. your Shopify store, they are your product, and they are also your marketing campaigns as well. If you do any one of these things half fast and skip corners, um, then ultimately your business is gonna fail. So you could have a really nice Shopify store and an awesome product that people absolutely love, but with Shopify, you don't get any traffic. It's not like Amazon FBA where the traffic is already there or like eBay, the traffic is already there. The biggest downside to Shopify is the fact that you're responsible for getting that traffic onto the store yourself. So even if you have a brilliant website and a brilliant product, if you don't know how to get that traffic onto your website and how to target and find the right audience, your business is still going to fail. The biggest place where I see people failing and falling at that first hurdle is probably the product or the Shopify store, mainly the Shopify store to be honest, because it, with the tools out there and with the video tutorials, especially on YouTube, it's fairly straightforward finding a product that is going to sell, that people want to sell. I record videos weekly on YouTube showing people how to validate a product is a winning product and give you evidence of products that are currently being bought today in the masses. Where a lot of people fall down um, and where the kind of tutorials lack on YouTube as well is how to truly build a great store that's optimized. So a lot of people where I see them failing, they'll have a great product that's in trend, it's in demand, they know where to source it from, and they can make a profit. 
they can target and run decent marketing campaigns and get people onto their store, but then it's their store that lets them down. If you have a brilliant product and a brilliant marketing campaign and you're getting hundreds, if not thousands of people onto your Shopify store, but then your Shopify store just looks really dodgy and people don't feel comfortable or trust it enough, then you're gonna lose all of those people and you're gonna have a really bad conversion rate. So they're the three things that you have to do correctly, which are your Shopify store, your product, and your marketing campaign. So number one then, let's start with your Shopify store. How do you actually build a really decent, good, trustworthy Shopify store? That's the key word there is trust. What you need people to do is when they come onto your store, they have absolutely zero hesitations or worries about spending their money with you. Because people will have discovered you via an ad, probably on Facebook if you're watching this channel, because that tends to be what I talk about most, um, people are naturally have their guard up. People are naturally hesitant, so, so it's not just a case of having a website. You have to have a website that does all these certain things, that breaks those guards, breaks those barriers down, demonstrates social proof, demonstrates you're a real and legitimate business, and by doing all those things, people will feel comfortable and people will definitely shop with you more often. So here's some things you can do on your own Shopify stores that will help with that. Number one is to have a fully built out contact page. So you need a contact form, of course, it's not 100% necessary to be honest. The things that are necessary are the contact information. So as a very minimum, you have to have an email address. It has to be branded for your website too. Do not use a Gmail email address. I've seen it done before. Um, in my opinion, you, could, you need a phone number as well. Um, you, there's services, the softwares and services out there like Skype, where you pay six pounds a month for your own phone number. It looks so much more professional than not having a phone number at all. With that as well, you can then put opening hours, hours in which you can say you're going to answer the phone. It's a little bit naughty, um, but you don't have to. So with some of my stores, I mean, I've got a phone in my office here, so it doesn't matter. But what you can do with Skype is when people leave answer phone messages, you get a message on Skype. You can listen to that answer phone message in your own time and then choose to either email them back or ring them back if you're confident enough to do that. But just by having a phone number on there, people will see it as like they can get hold of a real person. This is a real business and they've got something to track and trace should or they've got somewhere to go and complain or somebody to talk to should there be any issues with their order. And then something I would also put on top of this, if you're serious about dropshipping that is and you wanna make this a full-time thing, then a physical address. Putting your house address on there is is an option. However, most people don't feel comfortable putting their home addresses, which I can understand. So a couple of ways around this are, number one is a virtual address. Um, if you Google it, you'll find loads of different people offering this as a service. You'll be able to put a fancy London address. Again, with me having a physical address here where I run my businesses from, it's not an issue for me. But in the beginning, I had a virtual office. Um, it was at a place called Mercury House. So it looked super professional, super legit. And I put it on my website probably in three or four different locations because I knew that if a customer saw that physical address, they there was someone to hold accountable should they have issues with their order. So that trust just went completely out of the window. It was a night and day difference between having all the proper information on my store and not. It makes a big difference to customers. So virtual addresses is an option for you. And then as kind of like a last resort, it's also quite expensive is to have a PO box. It's basically, which is basically an address with the post office. Anything that goes to that PO box will get poured into one pile and then you can go and collect it. Um, from your local post office. Something else I'd also have on your store is at the top in the main menu is a track your order page where people can go and track their orders. Not only will this make you look more professional because it will prove that you're a legitimate business sending out your orders, otherwise why would you, ha why would you have a track your order page? What it will also do is it will cut down your customer service emails because as a dropshipping business, the number one email you will get is people asking where that order is. So if you have a track your order page on your Shopify store, the majority of people will go there versus sending you an email, which then you have to spend a one or two minutes responding to. Other things you can include on your Shopify store is reviews, um, reviews, reviews, reviews as, as a very minimum. 
picture reviews on the actual product page which you're going to be advertising try and get 50 plus reviews on there if you can so when people come onto your store they see that there's been past customers that have been before them received their product and been happy with it another place as well um, i've been doing this a lot recently is trying to get customers to go back to the original facebook post and post in a positive comment on there with a picture of the product because that is super super powerful because what it will do is people will see the review at that point rather than on your store there's going to be a lot more people that see your facebook ad than there will be your shopify store so if you can get people seeing it on that level and people can actually click on that person's name and see their real person on facebook it may again it just makes a massive difference so try and get friends and family to do that also to help you out something else you can do as well and um, this one's a little bit more difficult because it does take a bit more kind of understanding of who your ideal your target customer is so it always helps to sell in a niche you have experience in um, yourself and spent money in yourself is on your product pages try and stay away i'm a big fan now actually of using gem pages i've only really discovered it this year but basically what it allows you to do is really customize with drag and drop features and functionality so it's really easy to use but it separates that default shopify product template um, from from gem pages it just makes it look so much more professional there's so many different more features and sections and ways you can build out your page to look at to make it look really professional they've got some great templates too so check those out um, in my opinion definitely worth the money you can also test whether it's worth the money too so their basic plan starts at 15 pounds a month which some people might think is a bit expensive but what you can do is take your current conversion rate install gem pages wait two weeks take your conversion rate at that point and if your conversion rate is one percent higher which equates to 10 extra orders at 50 pounds then you know gem pages is paying for itself and you can keep it running on your store going back to having knowledge about your actual customers though this is actually something i took from a book i read so there's a guy called alex hormozy you may have heard of him um, he wrote a book called 100 million dollar or um, offers and one of the exercises in the book is to basically take your product and then write down every single hesitation or every single question that your customers um, might have about the products. Now it seems like a time wasting exercise. It probably seems too much hassle for most people watching this video, but trust me, it makes a massive difference. It can be the difference between a business that fails and a business that succeeds. So spend those five to 10 minutes really thinking about it. Ask friends, ask family, write down every single potential question or hesitation a customer might have about your product. And then what you need to do is answer that on your product page. Now don't necessarily have an FAQ with every single question, every single whatever, just address it in your product description. So if you've got a product that is rechargeable, one of the sections which you have with an image and a nice heading and maybe a battery emoji to draw attention to it because it's one of the main features. And then just to explain how long it takes to charge how long a charge lasts for and then that's one of those questions done dusted and you can move on to the next one because if somebody has a really big kind of niggling point about a particular product that is unanswered most people will just leave your website they're not going to send you a message wait for a response and then go back to your website to place an order or at least most people won't probably 90 percent of people won't you might get the odd question but once somebody's left your website, trying to get them back onto your store to then continue and finish that order is so much harder. So if you can just answer all of those potential questions while they're there and then on your store, um, it's gonna make a big difference. Moving on to pillar number two, which is the product itself. So there's kind of two strategies really to adopt here. If you're looking to make as much money as possible, as fast as possible in Q4, then the best strategy is probably just go for what's working now invest in drop a spy i'm not sure how much it is i can't remember i think i'm pretty sure you can get discount codes online for 50 percent off for the first three months as well so it might make it even less than 10 pounds a month it's worth every single penny even if you just use it for that one month to find out what's working now i've done tutorials on how to work it you'll be able to find three to five maybe half a dozen pretty much guaranteed winning products in in less than half an hour trust me it's 100 worth it if you're trying to make the most of q4 um, when it comes to picking the products itself 
there's a whole bunch of reasons um, but the main ones are number one obviously it has to be legal to sell on facebook it doesn't break any policies um, so you're not encouraging people to drink smoke um, in fact i think you can even sell some tobacco products not that i've ever tried to um, can't be a weapon it can't be anything stupid basically just make sure it's a safe um, and kind of like everyday product make sure you can actually source it of course no good being out selling a product that you can't actually source um, make sure that it's trending you can use google trends which is 100 percent free which will show you um, if it's a popular search term or not check out the comments on existing facebook ads for it are people actively saying they're buying this product and they're happy with this product is there loads of engagement on those posts is there 1000 plus comments a thousand plus engage um shares if there is that's a really great sign is it within sort of 50 to 100 pounds anything cheaper than that you might struggle to make a profit anything more expensive than that um, you might find it difficult to convert people on impulse can you actually target your customer directly on the platform you're planning on using so open an ad account on the platform you're planning on using um, try and build out a campaign and see what sorts of things you can target see what sorts of interests or behaviors you can target if you're using Facebook and then for the product itself that's pretty much it as long as it's safe um, so you're not worried that it could potentially harm the end user um, as long as it's cost effective of course as long as you can sell it for I'm going to say 30 pounds 20 pounds is usually the very minimum but if you've got 30 pounds room in there and it is all of those things I've already mentioned in this video, um, then I'm pretty confident you'll be able to sell that product um, profitably as long as it's in demand enough. Moving on to the third and final pillar then is Facebook advertising. I'm gonna focus on Facebook ads because it's where I spend the majority of my money. Um, in fact, I said in the intro that I see most people fall down on the Shopify store, I probably see an equal amount actually fall down when it comes to Facebook advertising too. This tends to be where most people um, cut corners well they do cut a lot of corners on the Shopify store to be fair so probably equally when it comes to Facebook then again because it's a new platform as a beginner it could be quite overwhelming there's so many different options and it's always changing as well which is a nightmare but ultimately the fundamentals stay the same and that is you've got to focus on the data that comes back from the actual ads you're running what you need to do in the beginning is establish a baseline so run three to five ads maybe half a dozen ads um, and then focus on the pieces of data which indicate how interested in your product they are so this will be your cost per click because obviously the more interested your audience is the more people that's going to click and therefore the cheaper the clicks will be it will be your CTR so this will be the percentage of people who see your ad and click it so again the higher the percentage the more interested people are in it when you've run that ad initially for half a dozen ads you can establish a baseline you can take an average of your CPC an average of your CTR and then that's what you need to be aiming to be and improve upon every single time and you do this by changing the creative and you also do this by changing who you're targeting so they're the two things mainly which you'll be spending a lot of time split testing your creative and the audiences and you'll be manipulating those things each and every time to try and bring those numbers down and get people onto your store um, as cheaply as possible as for the actual targeting on Facebook then try and pick interests which are related to people who are spending money in your niche so for example the dog niche don't just target dog lovers you don't have to own a dog to love dogs most people do love dogs but most people don't have them target things which are related to people who own dogs because people who own dogs are more likely to buy your dog products so target things like dog walking or dog training or dog behavior, those sorts of things. As for the creative itself, I did a video on this a few days ago called the Facebook ad creative formula. So I'm not gonna go over it too much in this video, but basically it's a combination. You have to kind of take people through a series of questions which are answering similar to like I mentioned in the Shopify store for your product page, try and answer as many questions as possible, which people will be thinking um, subconsciously and asking themselves about your product you what you will do is you'll take 
like the big three or the big five or however many there are, the big ones that people are gonna wanna know about your product and you answer them in your Facebook ad creative and you're basically showing somebody the features and benefits of it. But there's a couple of things that you need to do before and after that just to make your Facebook ad as effective as possible. The three main things, like I said, I've done a video on it, so make sure you go and check it out because there'll be a lot more detail in that video and there is an example too of an actual Facebook ad creative. But the three main things are, number one, is you have to say who it's for very early on in the beginning because then people know whether it's for them or not. If you don't say who it's for, people will, will just skim over it. Whereas think about it, if you're, if you're really into computer games and you're scrolling through Facebook and the first thing you see is people who love computer games or people who love Call of Duty, if that's you, you're probably going to stop and see what they have to say. It's the same with e-commerce. Number two is you have to show people what the product is, features and benefits, which I've mentioned. And then you have to finish the video off with a call to action. You have to make it clear as day to people that if they do like your product, then what do they have to do next? They have to click the link you've put above the video or click the button or go to a certain URL, whatever it may be, depending on the platform, of course, that you're using. And so with that being said, I um, think I'm gonna end the video there because I've been talking for a lot longer than I thought it would be. Hopefully I have broken down the whole dropshipping business model to make it a little bit simpler for you. So you know the three main things you need to be focusing on. Anything that I haven't mentioned in this video, you don't really need to worry about a whole lot. It certainly doesn't need to hold you back from starting your business. There's so many things that you can learn along the way and I suggest you take that opportunity to do so as well because the greatest experience you'll always gain will be from actually running your business itself. So with that being said, good luck on your journey. Make sure you drop me a message um, somewhere, whether it's on here, Facebook, wherever it may be, and let me know how you get on. All the best and I'll see you in the next video.